So uh, let me introduce the victim one more time. Okay, so the victim is Little Rod Made It. All right, this guy, um, from what I heard, he is accredited and actually. Some people know him in the industry, all right? Now, he's worked with a bunch of people. He's tagged them here, T-Pain, Diddy, Mary J. Bly, Jack Harlow, Jeremiah, Music Soul Child. However, uh, a few months ago, he had a musical dispute with Diddy, okay? Now, it started off by him explaining why he needed to do a GoFundMe. Here it goes. I apologize to anyone. This video may be embarrassing, too. Um, let's just jump right into it. Some of you, you may know me or may not. I'm a music producer who's a writer and musician. Um, different genres. I started in the gospel and jazz and, and R&B and worked my way over to the hip-hop side. I've been working on an album. Um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the Love Album, Off the Grid by Diddy. Um, okay, let me pause here too to, to figure this out. Diddy Love Album Off The Grid. When was that released? It's important for me to know dates that we could kind of figure out when shit went bad, all right? Because I don't think he's accusing Diddy of doing stuff either after this. It, like, it, the time period matters. Okay, so it, the release date was September 15th, 2023, right here, okay? So really, this is something that's six months old. He had a dispute with Diddy. He's saying, yo... Let me continue with what he's saying. But, you know, he worked on this album and he let me let him tell the story. And it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. Taking this album on has required so much time, um, you know, months and at, at, at a time, 16 hours, to 24 hours a day, um, sometimes. You know, Diddy would request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And and the truth is, we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is they're not playing fair. They they hit me on below the belt on so many situations. Just 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 dealing with this. It's the contract that they give me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting. The the the, the producer fee pennies. And on top of that, these guys are trying to steal my publishing. I can't go for that. So I'm fighting back. He's a fighter. Um but I'm 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 gonna put in this fight. I gotta do it for myself, my rights and most importantly my kids. Taking my publishing or stealing it is is just it's, I'm not going to let that happen. Not going to let that happen. Again, this is one of those projects that, that took so much time from me. I miss holidays uh, with my family. Now, here's here's the thing, right? And, you, you know, I remember I did a whole conversation about kind of explaining about writers and, like, you know, intellectual property and publishing and stuff like that. Again, this guy calls himself a producer. I'm not too sure if he also writes, but but he's a producer. Again, I, as I said, told you, usually the producer is entitled to half the publishing on the track, right? Now, the thing with people like Diddy and even a Kanye is that they might utilize 10 different producers, right? They might even have the engineer producing, right? They might throw in something themselves. So it'll be so many producers that how do you determine someone's credit or someone's contribution to a record? Now, honestly, just kind of how the game goes is that the person who is the bigger artist, like, for example, if you're working with Diddy, him or his label, they're going to kind of dole out what it's going to be. And, and and it's not much of a, oh, no, uh, like a negotiation. It's like, hey, listen take it or leave it type of thing. So, you know, I, I kind of understand what where everybody's like mad over the thing with publishing, but this is the business of music. It's all about leverage. It's never really about talent. It's all about leverage, right? And if you do, if you have no leverage versus Diddy, it is what it is. Anyway, let me let me finish. Just out working on this album. At what point I was running around with the, the hard drives, the computer, just to run the ball on this album to finish the production on it and make sure that this album came to, you know, a good project with good vibes, you know, 
just where it is right now. Um, and just to be offered little to no participation in this is highly disrespectful. I won't be that guy 20, 30 years from now looking back saying, I wish I'd done this. I'm going to do this now. Um, doing this situation is not easy. Taking Puff to court, suing him is not easy. I don't have the 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 monies that it's going to take to fight him in court. So I'm just asking, you know, if you if you in support. What up, brown skin dragon? I see you, girl. It's in my bio to my GoFundMe. Um, so baby, what up? The money we go we go towards my attorney fees and to just make sure I'm keeping my head above water during the process. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Okay. I apologize. All right, well, so that was a video. He basically said he set up a go film me because he got to sue Diddy. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, as much as, you know, not discouraging people to file lawsuits or none of the, the things like that, once you get to this point and the same point that where Tiffany Red was at where you're calling out Beyonce or you're, like, publicly saying, yo, this person is jerking me, other people take note of how you carry yourself. It's not even, it's more than about the business. If you know somebody is always going to go to online and try to sully your name, um, rather than get on the phone and maybe try to get on the phone already. Usually, most people in the industry are going to stay away from you. Like, for example, this guy, I'm pretty sure he's not like that popping relevant today because once you're doing this, and just like, again, with Tiffany Red, ain't nobody going to come to you for songs. They'll be like, oh, shit, I'm chill. I don't want to do nothing with you. You know, the, the industry is usually a lot of unspoken rules, and this is one of those rules where if you're exposing niggas, right, People aren't going to be, unless you're super fucking talented, they're not going to be continuing to work with you if they feel that, oh, you might do that to me as well, right? Okay, so it makes that video, and we, we got to notice the date. This was February 7th, okay? Uh, after that, he made another video, okay? And this was the update the day after. Hello, everyone. Um, until further notice, I would not be performing at any gigs. Or anything like that um for security reasons my family friends and everyone close to me it just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and you know it's very scary um for myself and you know it has me worried about my kids and you know just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that so just moving forward um, just want to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. Love. Hello, everyone. Okay, so he thanks people for their support and all of a sudden... You know, uh, I think think. Well, actually, he was already posting that he was a little bit disgruntled. He posted um, a few days even before that how supposedly Diddy's demeanor was in terms of working on the music. Hey, cause I run shit. Yeah, nigga. You feel me? I run shit. Good yeah, you do. Yeah, Little Rod ain't worth giving this kingdom to if we don't <laughs> control his publishing. I can solve his efforts with three other human beings. He's eating at our table, and I like his backstory, but you need to have other people. It's hard to work with him unless we have his power. He's a piece of shit human, but we do not need his talent unless we can work with him. Okay. And that little back and forth right there, which did, it did he just seems to not give a fuck. Anyway, you see some people in the comment section who were trying to clarify what's going on. Not too sure who this is. Jazzy, who's this? Uh, not too sure who that is, but they, they were saying, Rod, come on, you you added songs, sounds to songs. You were an instrumentalist for hire. Don't add fuel to a man's name that's going through it. See, okay, that's also contextualizing what's going on. For example, Kanye West. Kanye West wants to produce My Beautiful Dark Twist of Fantasy. Most notably, he goes out and gets an orchestra, all right? He doesn't, he's not classically trained in playing the piano. He knows his notes. He knows how to kind of get around maybe could hum a melody or whatever, but he might need a, a someone who's classically trained to play whatever, whatever. Now, did that person who played the thing and laid it down, are they work for hire or should they get intellectual property credit? 
a lot of times they don't get credit. They usually just say, hey, listen, we, we brought you in to play this uh, piece. You play this piece. We're going to compensate you pretty decently. But other than that, you're not getting credited, whatever, whatever. None of that's happening. Um, this person, Jazzy, is saying that's what Rod kind of meant or kind of contributed here. And I think there were some other people that kind of jumped jumped into the mix. Uh, I, I know Stevie J eventually did. Let me see. Let me see. Where's Stevie J? Okay. Okay, Stevie J commented on another post. Because I run right? shit. Right? And he said, man, post the whole video, man. Don't make it seem like niggas sitting around joking on you and you, and you didn't produce nine songs in the project. Adding a piano on a song doesn't make you the producer. Adding a bass on a song definitely don't make you the producer. Tell the whole story of how you came in as an engineer. Didn't Don't get selective amnesia and don't try to make the homie look like he's stealing from you because clearly I know that ain't the case. Okay? Right. So those things happen. Right. And now all of a sudden an explosive lawsuit drops and it dropped yesterday, which is almost like two weeks to the day. Here's the lawsuit. And um, again, I think we got up to like page 20 something, but we're probably going to go through it again a bit. Again, a bunch of people are mentioned. You're going to see their faces here. Yo, they did diddy dirty with this picture, man. I ain't going to lie to you. Being a billionaire, you could look like you 35 for the rest of your life, man. Diddy do look like he close to 70 right here, but shit. You know what I mean? Hey, you know, he puts it together. Uh, this was during COVID when people saw him, like, with his grades. But you never see what grades easier these times. Uh, yeah, even Justin got sued. Lucian got sued. Which, by the way, 100%, this guy's done in the music industry, right? Once you sue, this is a top nigga in music, right? Like, he, he's like the... He, he's a guy who Drake raps about saying, you know, to Lucian, I'm tearing a hole through my budget, all that type of stuff. He runs all these labels, right? He He's the president um, and CEO of uh, UMG. Ethiopia, sh she works a lot with um, the Migos QC, and she's been working in Capital for a long time over in Motown. Um, and I guess this person was one of uh, the assistants. You see Mot Motown also gets sued. Universal Music gets sued. Once you sue these labels like that, you're done. Again, this industry is one of those places where, you know, did I ever tell you the story of, um, I never, I probably never told you the story of Lil Pump. This is the story I heard about Lil Pump, right? Lil Pump. So Lil Pump, Lil Pump tried to finesse the label and basically found out what an industry that no matter if they compete, they they all kind of it's almost like it's a fraternity to some extent i'll tell you how lil pump signs a deal gets some money puts out some records then lil pump's lawyer realized the deal wasn't actually legit because lil pump was under age and it didn't go through the proper legal um procedures that it needs to go through to get a underage artist signed what what happened then lil pump technically got uh, um got out of his deal and all the masters for the songs remember when you sign they usually own your masters all the masters for the songs that he dropped under the label went back to him so now he got money from the label and then he gets out of the deal it's like finessing if y'all know the streaming world it's like what ninja did in a sense but he didn't finesse he got he got paid to go on mixer and then after mixer shut down and he was back on twitch you know he was on twitch he got paid to leave and go to mixer he went to mixer got the money and then rent right back to twitch anyway so so pump gets out of his contract right um warner music group they felt they were finessed um simultaneously from what i was hearing uh the top guy there at you know his management group the lights global was also trying to get like a joint venture deal to sign other artists remember that's around the time also boom gang is popping in they, they had a whole plan of like signing a lot of these viral people and kind of go crazy and what ended up happening is that and this is a story i heard and i heard it from legit sources what what ended up happening is warner music group allegedly because they felt so finessed and they thought this their business was done in bad faith that you know to try to finesse a record label like that they like they take it personal they banned pump and his management from any sony uh, no not sony warner music build it like they, not not at all well of course there's two other big companies sony music entertainment and then universal music group so of course they're like, all right, fuck Warner then. You know what I mean? We finesse their ass. We about to go over to the other companies that don't fuck with them, and we're gonna sign with them. I hear they try to go to the other companies, and the other companies are looking like, nigga, you just finesse them. Would you think, wow, we gonna give you money that you go finesse us? 
essentially nobody signed them or was willing to even have those conversations to sign them, which led to them having to do the right thing. You know what they did? Went right back to Warner. I don't know if they apologize, but they got back in a deal with Warner, okay? Because at the end of the day, the industry just wasn't about to let no little nigga with no fucking face tattoos come and finesse this whole thing. Now, of course, like, he's still landing on his feet because, you know, shit, he got back in his deal and whatever, whatever. But uh, to think that you're about to hit a lick on a record company or the record uh, um, industry and still fuck with the industry doesn't work like that. So uh, I, I give you that story to, to tell you, when you start suing Universal Music Group and Motown and them, you're, you're essentially announcing you're done because they ain't nobody going to fuck with you after that, right? If you sue Universal Music Group, Universal is not going to clear anything with you producing. Like, you know what I mean? Come on, you know, especially when you're accusing them of some such heinous things. Anyway, cool. Um, all right, so, yeah, and then talks about uh, Ronnie Jones, which is a little Rod. And yeah, we went through a lot of these things, which is a summary of uh, events. All right. So we'll read a couple of these from September 20, 2022 to November 2023. He produced nine songs on the album. He lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays. So it looked like maybe, well, this this is only two months that he produced. I need to know when he lived with, when he lived with um, Diddy. He lived with Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Okay, he resided at his house um, in L.A., Cali, um, Los Angeles, which is in Cali, in New York City, and uh, Miami, Florida, or Miami, Florida, actually. And also um, Virgin Islands, I guess he was on a yacht. Okay, all right. L let's get to some of the things that would be interesting. It said, Mr. Combs required him to record him constantly. Now, I was thinking like recording, like, you know, having a phone or like a camera to record him. But now we're getting a little context from what Stevie J says, which I don't know if this guy actually admits at first. He wasn't a producer. He was an engineer. He was an engineer that came into the fold that probably started producing. That, that, that A lot of engineers have aspirations of being producers because, shit, that's the closest way to get your beats already chosen, right? Because you're working with the artist to pick beats, right? So if you, if you got some shit, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to get way more done. Anyway, cool. Uh, okay, so he, I guess he's recording him um, doing music, right? Um, cool. He says he experienced a bunch of stuff that went too far beyond his role as a producer on the album. Okay, the claims and his complaints, blah, blah, blah. blah. All right, cool. Uh, it said there's hundreds of footage. And audio recordings of Mr. Combs and his staff engaged in a serious illegal activity. This nigga was a fed. Holy shit. Now, these are like some of these allegations are crazy. So Mr. Jones has secured if irrefutable evidence of a the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine. Oh, yeah, I can't see it. Can I see it? Oh. Right here. Sorry, chat. Ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, the discipline and, and distribution of unregistered legal firearms. Mr. Cohn was providing laced alcohol beverages to minors. God, that's, that, that's like a wild accusation to make. Like, Diddy's like 50. Like, you know what I mean? I know Diddy like his young girls, but like, he gonna get a 25 year old. Like, I can't see Diddy even hanging around with like someone who's a, a teenager. You know what I mean? Um, but this person claimed they have irrefutable proof, right? Which, by the way, we haven't seen such. They're just making those claims. And sex workers. Now, we, we've heard about those sex workers and, the you know, the male escorts, allegedly, um, from the Cassie thing. And let me see. Saying that basically, um, um, did he always tell them to go get drugs? Christian Combs drugging and sexual assaulting women. Yeah, by the way, I talked about this last night, so this might be a little bit of recap. We're, we're just going to have to speed through some of this stuff. Young Miami Cousin. Um or and or assistant ass assaulted Mr. Jones, actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually harassed and assaulted Mr. Jones. And then this is what's interesting. We need some people guessing right now. Rapper so and so, and this is redacted. Don't know why. Right? Rapper so and so on Mr. Combs' yacht, consorting with underage girls, sex workers, and R and B singer so and so. In Mr. Combs Los Angeles homes, consorting with underage girls and sex workers. Who y'all think those are? I know we're on page 20. We're gonna get there, you know. Uh 
Okay. They talk about a shooting that happened, right? And they actually back it up because there's actually a news article about the shooting. Um, they even have some pictures of, like, some of the stuff happening. And um, <laughs> this was hilarious. Mr. Combs attempted to groom him into engaging in gay sex. Oh, my God. This is where Stevie J kind of came in. Uh, Mr. Combs used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones, admiration of Stevie J, to groom and entice him to engage into homosexuality. Mr. Combs went so far to share a video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian man without a condom. This was done to ease Mr. Jones' anxiety concerning homosexuality. According to Mr. Combs, this is normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Steve, he's doing it. Oh, hell no. Nah. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper so-and-so, R&B singer so-and-so, and Stevie J. Who is the rapper? Who the rapper is, bro? I have a few, I, I don't know who it is, but I have a few, like, possibilities. Maybe one of these niggas thought the neighbors knew his name. Maybe the other nigga used to be like, hold on, wait a minute. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to figure out who could these redacted motherfuckers be. But one's a rapper and one's a singer. They're claiming that Diddy fucked him. Somebody says Freddie is Freddie Gibbs? Oh hell nah! You tell me, Fred? It was Diddy who took a picture of Freddie Gibbs, Gibbs, uh, Gibbs, Gibbs gaping asshole. Oh my god! Oh my sweet Jesus! Hold up! All right. Anyway, the following are screenshots of Stevie J. Now, let's get to Carisha Maxwell real quick. And by the way, yeah, I know we're on page 20. By the way, actually, let me in in interject something into that real quick. Because, uh, give me one second, XXLMag.com. Essentially, apparently it wasn't, it wasn't uh, Stevie J, but there is actually a video, right? So apparently the, you know, uh, it, look, it says a male porn star is claiming he's the one pictured in the sexually explicit photos used for Diddy's lawsuit and is actually not Stevie J. On Monday, a mu music producer, Rodney Little Rod Jones, filed a lawsuit against Diddy, accusing a media mogul of sexually abusing him and other crimes during their time working from September 22. Oh, never mind. I thought it was only two months. Oh, it was a year and like two months. Okay. September 22 to November 23. Okay. Lil Rod's sprawling lawsuit was obtained by, okay, whatever, whatever, damn, bet. Um, let me see, wait. Okay, in one photo, Lil Rod alleges producer Stevie J is pictured with having sex with a Caucasian male that Diddy allegedly provided for Lil Rod. What? However, an adult film star named D'Angelo Knockout Marquise is claiming on X, formerly known as Twitter, that he's the one pictured in the suit and not Stevie J. This is crazy, Marquise wrote in a retweet of the picture. In question from the lawsuit, he then um, added in separate tweets below, that's me, shaking my head. And he then said, yes, I was at Diddy's party. Now what? Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I, you know, just for research purposes, you know, sometimes... I would like look up the tweet. I don't want to look up this tweet, so I'm good. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take uh, XXL Mag at their face value for this. Pause, and uh, let's keep it going. Among the flood of disturbing accusations against Diddy is that he claimed that his uh, young Miami, which is Diddy's ex girlfriend, which they're not ex girlfriends from what I'm hearing. I heard she just tried to announce that to, to kind of lay low. You know what I mean? Like yo, the feds on us. Like let, 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 let's try to act normal type shit. You feel me? Lil Rod claimed Miami's cousin, who was reportedly her, uh, her assistant, sexually assaulted him in a bathroom on November 3rd, 2022 in Miami. Diddy, young Miami's cousin, and a city girl rapper her, uh, herself were all included in the photos in a lawsuit allegedly moments before the assault occurred. Uh, okay, okay. I hope this is not some gay shit. Hold on. 
Okay, okay, okay. I, I guess I can show it. If y'all want to go check out that nigga's this gay porn star page, that's all y'all. Uh, he says, this is crazy. Then he says, that is not him. Y'all be really trying it. Then he says, yes, I was at Diddy's party. Now what? Okay. All right. Okay. So the, the there's an actual porn star that's saying it, it wasn't Stevie J, but he's saying it was him. However, he's also still having a connection to Diddy because he's saying he was at Diddy's party. So we don't know if that kind of means that Diddy's having homosexual freak offs and he's hiring these guys. We do know from the Cassie lawsuit that Diddy uh, was alleged to have hired or get Cassie to a hire a lot of male prostitutes. And, and a lot of times, you know, if you're a male sex worker, you might get probably asked to do some gay shit. Right. So who knows? Who knows? But this is the first time in court. In a, or at least in a lawsuit, we're seeing very clear accusations to Diddy either encouraging, requesting, wanting, or fetishizing over some homosexual activity, okay? Now, okay, great. Um, so, yeah, let us uh, let me see what's going on here. Mr. Jones was in Mr. Como's house located in Miami. Uh, he was intoxicated. <laughs> Yo, chat. I did not say. I did not say it was Meek. Y'all niggas is tweaking. Somebody said scroll back. It said Meek name. It did not say Meek Mill's name. He did not. It, it did not say Meek Mill name. Wait. Oh, oh, hold up. Never mind. Wait. What the fuck? I forgot. Look, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper Five. That's redacted. Look, Five. He's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Yo, Meek. We were playing around with that Michael Rubin shit. But if you don't, you've been tweeting about, every, nigga, you've been tweeting about everything on planet Earth. If you don't get a Twitter rant saying you about to get Lil Rod killed, you about to shoot up his block, blow his mama's house up. This nigga is saying that you and Diddy were fornicating. What the fuck? Meek! Like, I can't even imagine such debauchery and such fuckery happening to a gangster rapper like Meek. Imagine after a freak-off session with allegedly Meek and motherfucking Diddy, and now Diddy's over here braiding motherfucking uh, Meek's hair. Like, come on, bro. No. He's a Philly rapper who did not. Nah, no way. Nah, it's no way, bro. Bro, it's no way. It's no way, dog. Yo, we need AJ in the building. AJ, where where are you at? AJ, where are you at? We need you instantly. Get in the court. Why are they saying maybe there's another Philadelphia rapper that dated motherfucking Nicki Minaj? Is there? Here's the crazy part. Why the fuck redact his name then describe the hell out of him? Right? Why redact his name and describe that nigga to a T? <laughs> and then <laughs> look, 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 look. Nah, this shit is jokes. Rapper five redacted, but they tell you exactly who he is. Oh yeah, he's a Philly rapper. Who, nigga, this is like Jeopardy. <laughs> He's a Philly rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Beep. <laughs> who is Meek Mill? Like, come on, bro. Like, what the fuck? And then the next person, R&B singer, six, redacted. Look. He performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Usher. No fucking way. Don't Usher got a song to my... I need a girl. That can, uh, 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 I need a. I never know. He meant to say I need a boy. What the fuck? Usher not gay. Usher gay? Yo, what's going on out here? I ain't gonna lie. This nigga Usher must have got hit with the triple whammy, nigga, or the double whammy. This nigga got herpes and he gay. Holy shit. 
God damn it, this thing can't catch a break. <laughs> it's like God said, we got to put this thing in the Super Bowl or something. Here. This thing have been this thing have been down bad for a minute. What the hell? Holy shit. If I found out that Confessions was about Diddy, nigga, I ain't gonna lie, man. Nigga, it's like when I heard that that nigga Frank Ocean, when I used to play that song, Thinking About You, all the time. Until I realized he was thinking about a whole nigga. The shit just hit different afterwards. Like, huh, wait, what? If I found out that Usher, like, it, it, it was bad enough when I found out that Let It Burn was just him telling the doctor the shit was burning. And he caught the herbs. But it's going to be even worse if I find out that when he was confessing, he was confessing to a man. Oh, no, no. Say they so. No. Now, me, yo, let me check me tw Twitter timeline. Yo, Meek, now ain't the time to be talking about switches on the street, nigga. They want to know if you're a switch hitter. That's what we want to know, nigga. Fuck that. We ain't talking about switches on guns. Are you a switch hitter, nigga? That's all we want to know, okay? I don't want to believe it, Meek. But don't, this ain't the time to talk about switches. Did you switch sides? Are you a switch hitter? What's going on, gang? By the way, I don't believe this. Me, me and Meek is my close personal friend, and I don't think he would fuck a man. I, I think this is blasphemous. There's nothing in Meek Mill's history that even make him look gay. Why the hell they told my Meek Mill like this? I'm not going to let no bum-ass producer talk about my close personal friend Meek Mill like this. Meek Mill is a straight-up gangster a stand-up individual stamped and certified from the trenches. He put his whole hood on. Meek not gay. Wait. Is there anything? Let me see. Why y'all saying look up the pool video? What happened in the pool? Oh, him belly flopping? Meek Mill pool. Let me see. Oh, the fries on the lap? Nah, that was epic. That was epic. The fries on the lap was crazy. That was epic. Wait, that's about this one? Wait, nah, I ain't got no sound. So ain't got no sound. Here we go. Wait a minute. Daddy, you putting in that work. I'm proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Like you like mom and daughter. Fuck. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Now, I talked to some old heads, like some niggas who still wearing, like, you know what I mean? Ivisu jeans, you know what I mean? Like, they still rocking Rock Aware and Sean John. They tell me that Diddy's just old. Like, they said niggas in the 90s and 80s called other men daddy. Like, that was a term of endearment. You feel me? So instead of saying homie, back in the 90s, niggas called other niggas daddy. That was the thing. Yo, daddy, what's up, daddy? Daddy. Yo, daddy, you looking good, daddy. That's what I heard. Now, again... It is it, we're in a different era, so it sounds weird. But from what I'm hearing, this was normal. Latoya, I don't know how old you are, but that was going on. I see Latoya Walker. Mikey, stop playing. You call your homie daddy. Stop playing. I ain't gonna lie, man. Yo, Meek, send a tweet out immediately, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Y'all remember this? Yo, 
Yo. Yo, it's like Savage was like, it's, it's like they gave Savage an option. Yo, Savage, you, you want to hold on to Meek Mill's tummy? Or you want to just ride on the front? I, I'm going to just ride on the front. Yeah, now nah, I'm good. I'm going to just ride on the front. I go lie. <laughs> it still look crazy. <laughs> Yo, a man lifting you in the air like this? Oh, hell nah, nigga. Like, he finna pile drive you? That look crazy, too. I ain't gonna lie to you. This whole shit look crazy. I ain't gonna lie, dog. But I ain't gonna lie. Listen, meet my close personal best friend. Nobody can tell me nothing about him. This is this is just bike life culture. This is nothing. This is bike life, nigga. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas. See, some of y'all niggas don't know about Philly, nigga. Bike life run Philly, nigga. This is how they give it up. That's how it go. It's just like, we, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie. I would feel kind of crazy if my legs, and Savage my man though, but if my legs is open and something in between my legs, even if it's a seat, and all of a sudden another man could lift me up, oh, hell nah. Oh, nah, uh-uh. Nigga, that nigga got a thrust to lift you up. He got a, ha! Ah! Hell nah, nigga. Hell nah, uh-uh. It, yo, it's a lose-lose situation. If you... At this part, at least your, your pelvis mode not rubbing on his ass cheeks, but he thrusting to lift you in the air. If you on the back, you holding on to this nigga navel. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Yo, let me stop joking before, before my friend get mad at me. This that video of that motherfucking Drake saw when he said 21. Now nah, I'm playing. Drake, you know, 21, now you my god, but you got to catch these jokes too. Everybody got to catch them today. Everybody got to catch them. These are only jokes. These are just jokes, sense of humor, people. Sense of humor. All me got it. Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you. The well manicured, the well manicured hand resting also. Oh it, it, it's nestled on his tummy with like the pinky finger in in the motherfucking navel. I'm hey hey yo, listen, chill, 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 chill. Chill. This is bike life, though. Y'all gotta realize I'm defending me on oh, this one. Fuck y'all niggas. This is bike life, shit, nigga. See, y'all niggas never been in the streets. Y'all niggas be inside, man. Y'all niggas never been in the trenches, nigga. This is bike life. Feel me? All right. So he beat this allegation. This was crazy. The craziest part was when this nigga right here. He started looking back at it like he was like, oh, let me see how my shit tooled out too. Nah, this shit was crazy. Nah, he, he did the look back at it move real quick. Look, look at the nigga in the back. Look, at, look you see him? He looking back at it. He like, oh shit, my, yeah, my shit looking fat. Now I'm playing. Let me, let me stop. 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 I got to stop. <laughs> Yo, I got to stop. Yeah, see? You see all that pelvic thrusting? Now nah, I'm playing. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm going to get out of here. All right, no, no, this is bike life shit. Beat the allegations here. Uh, here, back in the 90s, all, the, all straight men called each other daddy. Go look it up. Go watch a video from the 90s to see how they giving it up. They called each other daddy. That's what's going on, daddy. You feel me? It was a sign of respect. I'm proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Somebody compared it right. They said it's like, it's like how Spanish girls call you poppy. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I heard this was a 90s hip-hop gangster thing. Real talk. Yeah. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Beat those allegations too. It's only two allegations? See, God sees and knows up. He said, come on. Y'all never called somebody little daddy? Yeah. Y'all be calling. Well, I never did that, but shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 use that in a sentence. Like, how would you call your man's little daddy? Like, 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 how, how would y'all put that down? Somebody says Meek calls his son Poppy. No, I think that's his name. I think that's his name. What are you talking about? That's his name. 
Meek and Diddy in matching fits? What are you talking about? Yo, I ain't gonna lie, this is kind of like a daddy post. <laughs> like, your daddy, <laughs> you feel me? Hold up. Fuck that. Every time I see that picture, it just reminds me of 50 Cent shopping Diddy. Classic. The nigga Pop was like, yeah, like, first he was amping him to, to right. get style. Then he was like, yo, he was like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Paul. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this nigga just said? <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this, this nigga, like, fuck it. Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> and this is the shit, this is shit that goes on. But this is a little fruit, but probably the fruit pile. <laughs> Trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? I'm just sitting out there for no reason. Yo, you don't chair. see accident pictures of me like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm telling you. Look, look. Later you're going to find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man, listen. I'm trying to tell you. The nigga Pop was like. Hmm. I asked 50 about that. Asked him to take him shopping. He told me he'd take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, what the, what'd you just say? Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. He doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. What? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> oh, oh, that's man. a nice gesture. Let's Let me go. get out and know, dude, you take me, that's <laughs> what a guy oh, says to a nice girl. <laughs> you know he loves me. I don't think he like you. You know he loves me. I don't think he like you. Okay. Can't stop. Won't stop. Why well, don't do some <laughs> little, little fluffy stuff? I asked 50 about that. That's in the it's kind of crazy. Why have you never stood next to nobody? Because you studied the 48 Laws of Power. Nah, man, you could, that's whack. And he knew exactly what I meant because he'd been standing next to something his entire career. Right. He stood next to Biggie. You put hot on him. That's stand next to the fight if you want, right? You stood next to Mace. Mm -hmm. Stood next to Jock. Look, Puffy might be the destination for anybody going nowhere. <laughs> Y'all are fucked. Nobody survived. You all are fucked. Look at it. Yeah. Please, people, help me help you. Who's first? <laughs> Yo, let's go to intermission with 50, 50 talking about this Because 50's on Relentless I don't know if he deleted them posts But 50 be on some shit, man I think he probably did delete them posts Did he? Yeah, I think he did, I think he did. Uh, We did post it, though Yo, 50 be on this nigga Diddy head, bro Oh, it, no, no, it's not this Where's that? Yo, 50 said, <laughs> look at this. Oh, shit. I'm on the floor dead. Somebody bring me back to life. God damn. This nigga, 50, he don't stop. All right, all right, all right, all right. Anyway. Okay. What about Usher and, and um, let's see. Usher. Diddy. That was type of gay. I moved to New York City and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reed's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was uh, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place, uh -huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh -huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls what was the there. Fuck? Wait, Luke. here you go. Okay. Okay. I didn't say that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place, uh -huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh -huh. Biggie Smalls was there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil' Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. 
Joe your parents were Mary okay? J. Blige. They didn't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and and what <laughs> do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> See? Oh, shit. Sean. Got to holler at you, man. <laughs> this nigga said he went through it and he wouldn't put his child through it. Damn, what the fuck was going on? Y'all think it was freak-offs? No. I'm not believing that. No. You know who I thought it was going to be at first? Fabulous. Nigga, I thought it was fabulous, nigga. Wait, did he? We had, we um we want to thank you. Come here. Don't don't sit on the bed. No, no homo. No, just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed. But it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it. You did. No, no, no. I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first of all, I'm not getting the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna. If we can, just let's let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even like. I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I, sh- I should look like he fresh off goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes. You know what I'm saying? Before pause was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. And now he's one of the richest stars in the world. Yo, what the fuck did Puff just say? Nobody's going to acknowledge this for me. Pup just said we used to wrestle over the Frosted Flakes. And we're streaming like... Nigga. The Frosted Flakes means we used to wrestle to see who nutted first? I'm thinking, they ain't, they ain't talking about cereal, my nigga. They talking about ejaculating. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? These niggas used to wrestle till one of them ejaculated and they were called it Frosted Flakes. Oh hell no! Nah. This a, they got code words for the fuckery. Now nah, that's crazy. That is crazy. Live. That was stupid. Listen. That was oh, you trying to take this thing into the bed next? Stupid. Listen. Hey, having a good time. Yo, I should made it in the bed. Hey, yo. You mentioned L.A. Reid sent you to um, to New York and you live with P. Did it. They call it Flavor Camp. Flavor Camp. Yeah. So what was that experience like and how did that help Usher's career? I think I think um, I don't think I'll be the artist uh, that I am today without the experiences that I had in New York City. One, just being. Is this after all these allegations? Because, you know, I, I don't think niggas going to try to throw them under the bus unless they're really going to try to throw them under the bus. And then uh, a new place where I would have to adjust. Right. I didn't have the comfort of home. I'm in New York City and they was, you know, done and sunning me to death, bro. And I was like, shout it. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we finna go over here. You know what I'm saying? And they was like laughing at me because I was Southern and they were like New York. But they would like took me and they, they, they like they took me under their wing. You know what I'm saying? And looked at me like the little bruh. Right. You know, I think back to, you know, the earlier times of being there when Bad Boy was formed. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned something. See Dwight Howard trying to push his son and he gets blowback. So where is Usher? If your kids, how are you going to be with your son? You say you got a son that's playing basketball. Flavor camp. He's with, be with other guys. He ain't watching the females, he's watching the guys. I keep telling you. To <laughs> do drugs and that Puffy enjoyed watching them be with other men. Where do you think his fascination is with watching the girls that he's with be with other guys. He ain't watching the females, he's watching the guys. I keep telling y'all the nigga been battling with this homosexuality shit way before all this shit came out. Y'all be, you know, you motherfuckers like always saying, and you too, John, ready to be lying, ready to make up shit. But if y'all go and listen to my videos before, y'all see I done spoke on all this bullshit before. Been telling y'all, Puffy Combs is a fucking homosexual. Any man sitting paying a motherfucking male to come and watch him have sex with his girl is a weirdo. Now I know y'all be like, well, you, you don't watch porn, you don't watch porn. No, number one, I don't pay a mother a man to come and, and watch me or, 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 or let me watch them a, a man I mean a girl I ain't gonna pay no man to do that and generally if I'm watching porn it's girl on girl <laughs> that you've been having laying around the house or something like that but just be like nigga, 
But Gene ain't tell y'all that. But okay. Okay. But to answer your question, John. Sorry I went off track. But he does that because he really faking the funk. Don't want to really see that female. It's really the male. That's why he's hiring a male escort. Because when you hire a male escort, what can you do? Pick the type of man that turns you on. Pick the type of female that turns you on. That's why they're doing that. They can go to the club and meet anybody if that's what they want to do. But they want somebody that they can pick. That's just going to come there, take the business. Because if you don't, if you pick up chicks in the club, then you get in situations like, y'all about to get mad at me. Or like Tupac got into. Or Mike Tyson got into. Where they want you to hug them after. After you uh, do whatever you do to them. People like that. Once you're done. How many times you done had your orgasm, I'll say the word, and then you was like, damn, I just did that with that bitch. <laughs> what the f wrong with me? How many times you do that? I wish this bitch get up and go now. I'm done. <laughs> How many times have you been in that situation? But when you hire somebody, they beating you to that thought. I gotta go. <laughs> Bye. Out of here. So that's where the, the craziness come with the hiring people. And mainly because you're picking from a catalog, dog. You're picking from what you, what you want, what you, what turns you on. And the club shit, or meeting on the street shit, or like Tiger Woods was doing, meeting. The, you remember Tiger Woods? Y'all ever notice one thing about Tiger Woods? Everybody that he was accused of, what were they? They were waitresses, because what he would be in the hotel, and he would meet them, talk to them, give them an extra little tip. And they come up to the room. That's how they meet. But when you just order something, man, you can do whatever you want, when you want, how long you want, and then they out of your life, generally. And they ain't got to worry about no accusations coming up 20, 25 years later, which is the craziest shit to me. Have a problem with it, y'all. Have a problem with anybody that's claiming to be a victim and hasn't been seeking psychological help. Shit, after a week. <laughs> I mean, God damn, how long? Man, it's crazy to me. But yeah. Did I answer your question, John? Yeah, but but in the process, you talked about how you have been talking about the photos and stuff with um, Misa and Suge and Puffy's son. Um, tell me about the story where Suge was going to run the ad um, with Hold, holding Diddy's son. And which magazine was that for? Was it going to be Rolling Stone or was it going to be The Source? He's or, supposed or to mention Usher. Yeah, Rolling Stone's when it did nothing like that. I really believe it was Dave Mays. I really really mean it was The Source the Source magazine. And uh, why it got pulled, I don't know. Gene Deal keeps saying he saw it. With the East, what the East won't take care of, the West will. I don't remember it coming out. I knew about the situation. But I would challenge any of y'all, I would challenge any of y'all to uh, research that magazine. Find it. With uh, Suge taking a picture with the, the chain and didn't come out on the West Coast. But, John, but there was a photo shoot done about that. Y'all like to. But Where did I you? am a happily married man now. But that's how that shit goes, y'all. Drugs and that Puffy enjoyed watching them be with other men. What do you think his fascination is? That crazy fantasy. Y'all got Gene, I told y'all. He's a weirdo. But now that is out. Everybody else can benefit from the stories. But you ain't been telling y'all. That's one thing I give him credit for. He been telling y'all. He ain't been saying no words like I just harshly said it. But, dude, man, the dude, it's going to come out. Usher, somebody going to come out and tell y'all these stories. It's going to come out. Usher, somebody going to come out and tell y'all these stories. Dude, man, the dude, it's going to come out. Usher, somebody going to come out and tell y'all these stories. Somebody gonna come out and tell y'all these stories. It's just a matter of time when they gonna come out about this shit. I told y'all about Will and Dwayne. Remember I told y'all about that shit over six, seven years on Art the Dialogue Channel. Y'all go and read those comments. How many of y'all, this nigga just making up shit. Is, uh, what are we talking about in 2023? Will and Dwayne. Keisha from Martin's husband and Will Smith. Where y'all get that shit from? I love how everybody been saying, oh, you've been trolling us. Oh, welcome back to the platform. 
Hey, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Man, I never heard that. Huh? Motherfucker, I'm the one that told you about Misa and the picture and all of that. Hmm. Interesting. Is there any other videos with Diddy? Wait. Man, somebody called me. I just seen, and so I'm staying off, staying off my, my social devices. It's too much cooning and buffooning. Too much cooning and buffooning. And believe, and believe me, when I get my thoughts together, I'm going to figure out a way to articulate myself. Because this conversation ain't even for the whole world to hear. It's just for us. Believe me, they saying you cooning and buffooning. Oh, believe me. And they loving every minute of it. I'm telling y'all today, I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. If it ain't about going up, but about being positive, about getting some money, loving God, I ain't too much coonery, buffoonery going on. The culture's getting killed. I'm not even saying nothing about it because I'm just so burnt out. I will be saying something about it. I'm, I'm, I'm in amazement on what's going on in the world. But hey, who am I? I am somebody. Even I get tired of this, man. Woo. It's too much cooning and buffooning, y'all. I'm gonna let you rock this every time you come right. in LA. Yeah, it's gonna be yours. So, let me okay. tell you, you're in LA. It's a little dusty, but you know, I'm gonna pull you the front shot. Man. Man. Woo! Okay. Okay. Alright, so, so I'm gonna be driving this yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, when you get 16, you come down, you gotta, you know, wear your seat. I mean, I'm 15, there. you could ride in the passenger seat. I got my permit. Now that, not yet. No. Alright, no, 16. No, 16. Slow All down, right. slow down, Josh. Okay. Let's slow down, okay? One step at a time. But yeah, yeah, the keys is yours when you, you know, when you get 16. You're All good right. to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. And then when you get 18, you get the house. You okay. get the mansion. Okay. Are yeah. you amazing? Yeah. So where, where are we off to now? Where would you like to go? Um, I mean, wherever you want to go. Where, where are we going? <laughs> we just, so check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, They're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when, you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours, let's go, um, are we gonna, let's just go get some girls, let's go get some girls. A man after my heart, that's what I'm talking about, kid. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, back to the lawsuit. So clearly he's saying, um, one's Meek Mill, he's saying that, this is little Rod back again, saying that, <laughs> y'all gotta get that picture off the screen, this is crazy. He's saying that Diddy told him that he fucked Meek and he fucked um usher okay uh we talked about this video which supposedly is actually a, a porn star a, a gay male porn star and it's not stevie j and that gay male porn star has came out to claim it and also said that he has been to diddy's parties whatever that means okay <clears throat> cool so now uh this is when this person gets sexually assaulted at um Supposedly Diddy's house by Young Miami's cousin. Thanksgiving Day 2022, Mr. Holmes, Mr. Jones was in Combs' house in Miami. Um, Combs was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Jones. He rejected him and walked to the restroom. While using the restroom, Young Miami cousin burst in the bathroom, began groping Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her in there to sexually assault Mr. Jones. As soon as the bathroom, uh, as soon as she entered the bathroom, she dropped her knees and began performing oral sex on Mr. Jones' exposed penis. <clears throat> he pushed her away and exited the bathroom. Damn. The only reason why that story kind of sounded a little bit true, I don't know if it's tr true, but it sounded a little bit true. Young Miami, she likes getting peed on. It would make sense that it runs in her family tree, like in her bloodline, that as soon as they see an exposed penis peeing in a toilet, they feel like they should put their mouth there. Kind of makes sense to me. 
They're walking human urinals. I'm sorry. That probably runs through her bloodline. I don't know. So it kind of makes sense, right? She starts to dress in and try to straddle him and have sex with him in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff. Once again, he pushed her off. The following are images from a video of, of young Miami, her cousin, Mr. Jones, um, her cousin, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Combs. Oh, damn. He was really around him. Is this the cousin right here? Damn, it's not even a bad bitch, man. God damn. Okay. So this is him, Diddy, Young Miami, the cousin. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay. Throughout uh, his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York. Okay, he was forced to solicit. Ooh, he was forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs. What? On or about February 4, 2023, Mr. Combs forced him to bring prostitutes and sex workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. It says eight. The writer has a copy of this video. I guess this is the video here. Okay, okay, okay. This okay. So there's a copy of this video. The sex workers that Mr. Combs forced to bring back on or about February second, they believe that Combs drugged him. He woke up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. What the fuck? They haven't forced him. He say recall. It recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. The fuck is this? Sex workers in Mr. Jones' bed the morning after being drugged. On another occasion, is he taking these pictures? Yo, homeboy, it sound like you. It, it sound like you was documenting you fucking these hoes too, bro. On another occasion, Miami, Florida, in Thanksgiving night, Mr. Combs asked him and and DeForest Taylor to enter the studio bathroom. He asked them for a hundred dollar bill because he wanted them to do cocaine with him. Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a hundred dollar bill so mr combs waited a little later to do coke with young miami so this is another accusation that young miami's a cokehead okay this is what's being alleged now i'm gonna be honest with you with all that you know um what are the symptoms of a cokehead i think young miami fits that bill now i don't know if she does coke but it's alleged that she's a cokehead that she does coke with diddy so to speak would i be shocked if this was true no i would not be shocked if this was true Later, uh, he required her to get uh, this guy to get sex workers from Booby on the Trap. And OK, this is Booby on the Trap. Cool. Damn, these are these are the sex workers. Did anybody find their at names? This is a distinct tattoo. Y'all can find who this person is. We got to get these people to uh, to come on stream to talk about this shit. If they come on and say it's cap or they come on and be like, yeah, we did go do what we had to do. We, we got to y'all could find this girl from this tattoo. Go look up Booby in like Booby uh, um, Booby Trap on the River. Or booby trap. And y'all could find a girl, maybe in tag photos or something, that got this tattoo. It's a very distinct tattoo. And y'all know bitches with tattoos. They always try to find a reason to show off their tattoo. So you're going to be able to find this tattoo. Does anybody know who she is? Because I want to get her on the stream. Does anybody know who she is? Does anybody know who she is? I'm trying to read y'all responses. Image search. Well, they blacked out the face. Someone says, she, says she's a porn star. It's okay. I, I don't want to reverse search anything. It might bring a porn. Uh, you guys do it. Just give me the at name. Okay. Somebody said, act your place of order. Get out of here, bro. Hmm. If, if, if y'all know who this is, it would be very, like, we got to start working a little bit to try to figure out if some of these things are true. Anyway, uh, he had no desire to solicit or have sex with the individuals in the previous paragraph. Mr. Combs uses power, influence, intimidate, and force Mr. Jones into soliciting and sleeping with these women. Now, this is where I think there's a certain cap in this. You're telling me that Diddy is getting bad bitches, even if they're prostitutes, and this guy doesn't want to fuck them. He's straight, by the way. And he's like, Diddy's making me fuck these bitches. 
against my own will. All right, I, I, I'm going to call Cap on that. I'm sorry, bro. You are enjoying this shit, too. Now, here's the thing about with us reading all these documents. Sometimes these people, we have to make a judgment call if we actually think they're victims. What's probably more fascinating is the details of a wild life that Diddy is supposedly living. That's more fascinating than rather than figuring out if this person or whoever is a victim because this motherfucker seems like he's having a time of his life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 no, this is well, actually, he could take it any way he want. This nigga got a face that only a mother could love. You get what I mean? If Diddy is getting you to fuck all the BBL bandits out of Miami, fucking the baddest bitches out of all these strip clubs, and he's paying for it, all you're doing is slaying some cock. I can't imagine a straight man being so mad, like, damn, I gotta fuck another one, Diddy? Another one? I gotta lay some more dick down? No, I'm thinking you capping a little bit. Now, if it was only about you saying you wanted to fuck bitches while Diddy was trying to fuck you, that would be interesting. But I'm going to be honest with you. Look like you was having a time of your life. Nigga, the, the, the first clue I'm getting already is, bro, you're taking pictures with, the, the, ain't this the girl, or this is a girl with her back kind of turned to him, right? You see, by the way, yo, they keep it on brand. Here's a Ciroc ball. They went through this, bitch. If you taking if you taking sneak pictures of a bitch in bed like a thought, my nigga, like you were definitely excited to fuck. You, you're like, yo, let me take a picture that I can show my homies later that I really pipe this bitch out. Like, come on, stop playing. Like, stop playing. Like, we're, we're not gonna be that dense and dumb, right? Now, I'm not saying everything is a lie, but we do gotta call out certain things. We're like, mm, does that make sense? You gotta remember, this is gonna be determined in a trial if you know Diddy will be liable for whatever he's accused of. Um, on a, on a civil end, but we got to start making like these decisions on does this hold water? Does this make sense? Could we see this happening? Like Carisha on Coke, I believe it. Okay, is it true? I don't know. But her being a cokehead, come on, man, come on, man. I keep telling you, you know, her talent can't be music, so that mouth got to be used for different things. And psh, I think we've done figured it out. Okay, Carisha Maxwell. Listen, I could imagine she would be indulging in certain type of drugs, especially if she, and it says if, she's engaging in recruiting individuals for some of these acts, okay? All right. Yeah, somebody says, man, how the hell they having, yeah, this was a freak over. You're right. Damn, this ain't no sleepover. This is a freak over. God damn. Another occasion, Miami, Florida. All right, no, we read that already. This is the movie trap thing. Here we here. He says, no desire to solicit or have sex with the individuals in the previous paragraphs, and, and, and Diddy forced him and intimidated him to fucking these women. Bro, stop it, bro. <laughs> stop it, dog. Like, it sounds like you were enjoying the lifestyle too, but were you uncomfortable with certain shit because you probably said Diddy on some gay shit or Diddy trying to fuck you too? That might make you uncomfortable. But again, if I'm thinking you're straight, I I, I think I don't think you're like, I got to fuck this, this hot chick. Because Diddy is making me cap. You know what I mean? Like, nigga, you're taking pictures of the girls sleeping. There's a fucking empty Ciroc bottle. Nigga, y'all was getting lit, nigga. Stop capping, boy. Anyway, the phone the following is the phone number for another sex worker that Mr. Combs required Jones to solicit and perform sex acts with at his home. Now, this is where it would get a little interesting. If Diddy's saying, fuck her in front of me, but I don't know, like, this didn't look like no fuck her in front of me shit. Looked like this nigga was fucking culling with this bitch, and then kind of woke up in the morning and took a fucking, you know what I mean, little picture of what's going on. All right, let's see what else. Uh, Here we go. Okay, here we go. Mr. Jones had no, all right, man. Uh, Mr. Combs used so many tactics to maintain dominion and control over Mr. Jones, Okay. Uh, he promised him a Grammy for producer of the year uh, for the Love Album. He offered him a quarter million to purchase all the instruments he wanted. He promised promised him ownership of his twenty million dollar property, One Star Island. Okay, Diddy was trying to fuck this nigga. Holy shit! He promised him ownership. Like, wait, why would Diddy offer his house? He promised him. Access to record label executives like defendants Lucian Charles Grange and Ethiopia Haber to Miriam. Um, Diddy would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat. What the fuck? To eat? Eat his face? What the fuck? Now, nah, this got to be some cold word. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face and informed him that he's willing to kill his mother. Janice, well, Diddy was going to kill his own mother? 
if he must in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. Like, these are some heavy accusations here. Wow. Mr. Combs and Justin Combs solicit drugs and engages in illicit sex acts with minors and sex workers. Now, here's the thing. Again, maybe this is all one big made-up story. What's actually given a little bit of credence that we got to think about is that we've seen certain things that we're like, what the fuck is going on with that? And and we're now seeing in detail, and this is why the Cassie thing held a lot of water too, because we've heard things and then we saw a detailed, detailed, like, you know, chronological, you know, uh, uh, um, story that kind of made sense. Like, for example, like, when you hear Diddy and, and Justin, allegedly, didn't they both supposedly date Lori Harvey? Justin Combs, Lori Harvey, apparently they both fucking the same girl or was at one point, right? You know, she obviously declined or denied it saying that she didn't fuck a father and a son. But some people felt like, no, shorty, you actually dated, you know, um, you you dated Diddy and Justin, which kind of is a little bit odd to most people because they would think that a father and a son wouldn't be interested or a woman wouldn't even uh, um, entertain both or one they would pick one basically right okay here we go on about july 2nd 2023 mr combs had a listening party at his home by the way also here's you guys gotta be my detectives let's do a private eye you know we gotta you know my my takeoff investigative crew you know when we remember we went through that whole takeoff case i still need y'all Anytime we hear a date, this is what I need y'all to do. Write these dates down. Go to Google, go to YouTube, and go to Instagram. On YouTube, you're gonna go, you're gonna find videos that may be around because it might be an Instagram live or some shit like that. And we could corroborate some of these things. Listening party this day. See if you can find a video. Let's see who's in the video. Let's see who's who's at these freak offs. Okay. This is like Jeffrey Epstein's like, you know, little manifest list. Now you remember that whole list? Like, we need to figure out everybody in the freak off. Carisha, you was trying to uh, uh, squiggle your way on out of this, talking about Diddy's your ex. Stop it, shorty. You're Ghislaine Maxwell, okay? You're Carisha Maxwell from, from now on. You've been in them freak offs. We're going to figure out everybody in, the, in these freak offs, all right? Okay, cool. So, yeah, make sure y'all hit the Instagram. Try to figure out everybody who's in this. By the way, I'm going to do this as well off stream. We got to get really into this shit, okay? All right, president of this party was an R&B artist, Nine. Let's figure out who that is. Nine, Grammy, or this is like Jeopardy. Like, niggas, just say the fucking name. Gr he's a Grammy Award win R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. What the fuck? Yo, <laughs> who is this guy? Yo, this thing, they're writing this like a Jeopardy question. R and B singer assault Bayesian billionaire. You can just Google it, I guess. Wait. Oh, that's Chris Brown. Oh, that's Chris Brown. Okay. All right, Chris Brown. Okay, damn. <laughs> I'm stupid. I'm thinking Bayesian. I'm like, <laughs> I'm well, I think as soon as I heard billionaire, I thought some old guy. They told my Rihanna. All right, okay, cool. President of the party was uh, Chris Brown, Justin Combs, sex workers, and some underage girls. Okay, the event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female sex workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them. An hour later, several sex workers appeared. Now, here's the thing that's also interesting. We got to start thinking with our brains, people. Remember, Mr. Combs, aka Diddy, is telling him or 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 saying to this guy, Little Rod, Yo, Little Rod, get me some whores, get me some sex workers, right? This guy is claiming there's underage people there. Is he procuring the underage girls or are the underage girls there already? Because it's it's almost like bait car a little bit. If, if, if a nigga says, yo, bring me some prostitutes, but he didn't say bring him underage prostitutes, prostitutes are fine, I guess, wherever you are. I mean, socially, people might, whatever, whatever. Legally, you know, I, I don't, depending on if they're just like actual prostitutes or escorts, it could be legal too. What I'm saying is that Who's getting the underage women? Is it him? Because he's also saying he's soliciting some of the women. You get what I'm saying? So if if you procured the underage girls and now you're accusing Diddy, now I'm not saying that's what happened, but I wish there was more info on how the hell underage women even get in there. Okay, we're going to try to figure it out, though. In addition to sex workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were, okay, okay. So so I guess he was he got the sex workers, but there were five women in the crowd that were underage uh, of 16, which I'm guessing he didn't procure. Maybe I should just write a little bit more. Okay, let's go. Mr. Combs forced all the women to drink uh, drink laced De Leon liquor upon information and believe Mr. Combs laced the liquor with ecstasy. Wow, okay. 
He didn't check the identification of any of these underage girls. The presence of these underage women made Mr. Jones very uncomfortable. He attempted to leave. Mr. Combs forced him to stay. Mr. Combs went so far to take his keys to prevent him from leaving. After being forced to drink Lace De Leon shots, Mr. Combs, no, Mr. Jones began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. Following, uh, following morning naked with a sex worker sleeping next to him. This is my problem with this lawsuit. This nigga is in all the fucking, in all the freak offs, but it's one thing where, like, Cassie actually looked and sounded like a victim. Like someone who was in a relationship with a man trying to make him happy, realized he's as these weird perverted perversions of fetishes, and she's trying to satisfy them. This nigga is always present when pussy, free pussy is being given up, when everybody getting lit, but he's saying Diddy is forcing him to fuck these girls. Bro, it sounds like you were partying with him too, bro. You get what I mean? Come on. Mr. Okay. Screenshots of a video from that night is embedded below. Okay, where is this video shot from? Mr. Cold Combs with a underage female. Whoa. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This might be good for Diddy. And no, no, not, not actually this. But because there is a video and then it's going to be an exhibit, if I'm Diddy's lawyers, I'm going to be like, hey, you, you have to prove this woman was underage, right? Because if this woman indeed wasn't underage, that means the merit and the veracity of some of, of this lawsuit goes down severely. Now, again, I, I can't tell if this person's underage or not. I mean, we can't see the face. We can't see nothing. But. I'm only saying it's good that there's a video because we, I could just say, yo, there's underage people there. Okay, show a video of it that we can identify the person that you can now, you have to prove the person's underage. Honestly, you're just talking shit. Okay, Mr. Combs with an underage female. Then it says an underage female here again. And it says sex worker there. And Justin Combs with an underage female there. Um, Justin Combs in 2023. How old is Justin Combs? Justin Combs age okay justin combs is actually 30 wow did he got a kid that's 30 what the fuck okay justin combs girlfriend do you have a girlfriend probably is that sweetie did he have a girlfriend at that time hmm okay Trying to figure out who his girl is. Maybe, maybe it was this girl. This is December third, twenty twenty three. I know this probably happened like early in twenty. Uh, what was the date on the lawsuit or on the party? This party was July. Second, he posted his girlfriend seemingly on December 2nd. So as long as he was with the same girl from July to December, maybe it was her. Or, you know, obviously niggas could cheat too. Is she underage? Who is this girl? Let me try to find this bitch. Not, not call her a bitch, but let me find this bitch out. What's her name? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to zoom all the way in, chat. What's her name? It says Stephanie. What? Come on, help me out, chat. What's that at name? Somebody said he had a girlfriend, black man. Well, well I'm trying to put it together because I'm like, if he's, if this is a party, maybe he's there with his girlfriend. Maybe the girl's face that's blacked out that they're claiming is underage is his girlfriend and if it's his girlfriend and she's not underage bro this is just cap in the lawsuit right because it looks like he's standing next to a girl here right imagine if it's his girlfriend if it's his girlfriend we could find out her age because he shouted out his girlfriend on social media come on right okay thank you somebody just told me stephanie 
A A N? What? What the fuck? Y'all gave me the wrong the wrong thing, sir. Stephanie Rao. Oh, is this girl? Is this Justin? Well, I, this might not be a real page, but whatever, whatever. Is this Justin Combs' girlfriend or this is um um Christian Combs? Hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't read the name chat. That's how I was asking. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, if this was her, look up her age. It could be her. It could be not. Um, we're just trying to find who this is. All right, cool. Let's get back to reading. Now we're going get, to get into some Cuba Gooden Jr. things. And I'm wondering why Justin Combs is listed as a defendant here. Maybe there's some more accusations about him. But, okay, are you saying you just see, you seen him with what you believe was an underage woman and you're now just suing him for that? Like, well, what's going on? Um, Mr. Combs attempts to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuban Gooden Jr. Mr. Jones believed that Mr. Combs was grooming him to pass him off to his friends. The fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced him to Cuban Gooden Jr. while they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. Um, during the introduction, Mr. Combs suggests that Cuba get to know him better and then left him alone in the makeshift studio on the yacht. As evidenced by a video, by the way, where are these videos being taken from? As evidenced by a video um, of which screenshots are embedded, Cuba Gooden Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling. Is it on video where he's touching, groping, and fondling the dude's legs? His upper thigh near his groin and the small of his back near his buttocks and his shoulders. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Cuba Gooden Jr. What the hell? He rejected the advance that Mr. Gooden Jr. did not stop until he forcibly pushed him away. The following is a screenshot of an encounter with Cuba Gooden Jr. Nah, hold up, man. Yo, Little Rod, stop playing. You smiling like a motherfucker in this goddamn video, nigga. Look like you look like you successfully getting rizzed up, nigga. What are you talking about? You push this nigga off. Boy, look like you getting successfully rizzed up, nigga. That boy whispering sweet nothings in your ear, nigga. Rubbing on your man boob. Like, stop playing, nigga. Look like you were liking this shit, nigga. That's the thing, man. Yo, how come all the victims in every picture, they always smiling? How you a victim and you look like you having the most fun? Boy, you was getting rizzed up, nigga. Nigga was rubbing on your little thigh. You thought they was going to do the Hassan Campbell to you, nigga. You was ready, boy. Stop playing, nigga. You was enjoying this shit, nigga. Stop it. Bro, this don't, yo, this thing look like he happy. He look like he he look like he over here picking out beats, and he look like he about to pick out which condom this thing is gonna beat his guts up with. Like, come on, stop it, bro. He look like he having a good old time. Only thing miss, missing his goddamn uh, picture is his goddamn Ciroc. Little Rod, man. I'm not saying men don't get sexually assaulted, but bro, I ain't see one tear yet, nigga. All I see is laughs and you telling us how much pussy you was getting. Huh? Nigga, that sounds like a good time. I could imagine how mad Diddy is. Diddy said, I brought this, I brought this fat motherfucker around me. All I did was fed him, clothe him, took him shopping, gave him all the money in the fucking world, and paid for bitches to fuck him who wouldn't look twice at this fucking fat nigga. And I'm the bad guy? Oh hell no. Nah. This nigga smiling a little bit too much for, 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 for my blood. I ain't gonna lie to you. Okay, the love album. During, during Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, he was under an implied work for hire agreement. He was... Okay, so, so, so this actually validates his other claim in those two videos we played before. What are you talking about publishing? Work for hire. Yes, you're, if you're work for hire, usually um, you shouldn't be thinking about publishing, right? He was comp he was not compensated for his time living with Mr. Combs for the songs he produced. As evidence, he was listening to the producers for the f um, for the following songs on the album. Okay, all these songs. Um, they benefited from his work. They offered him twenty nine thousand for thirteen months and thousand hours of works. Um, 
he was willing to take fifty thousand. His publishers publishing and royalties. Combs self self serving greed would not allow him to pay. Um, Mr. Jones another twenty one thousand dollars. Okay. By the way, oh look at this cheap shot, cheap shot. Mr. Gunn Jr. has a storied history of sexual assault and forcibly touching individuals against their their. And, and by the way, this lawyer, look, they even fucking up the spelling against their well. Like, come on. All right, the fuck. Sorry, what page is this? Twenty-seven. Let's get back to twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Here we go. Were we on 27? No, no, we were on 27. Right here, right here. Okay, cool. Mr. Combs' accepted business practice became so bad that Mr. Jones was left with no other choice than to make a public plea to social media to beg him to pay for his work. Um, after public requesting that Mr. Combs do the right thing and pay him fairly, uh, Mr. Jones received an onslaught of threatening message from Stevie J and Love Records A&R DeForest Taylor. It says, LOL, you are 100% liar. And weirdo, good luck. Numbers still the same. Run into nigga. Come talk to uh, come talk to me in public on a public podcast forum. Mr. Cohen used uh, his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Mr. Jones. According to him, Diddy is very forceful and demanding. Mr. Combs, I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is starting to give. Yes. Do I believe that Carisha was fucking licking pee off the toilet seat? Yeah. Do I believe that Carisha was fucking snorting coke with Diddy? Yeah. Do I believe that Diddy was ordering hordes of whores, okay, and scallywags and harlots and letting everybody fuck on whoever they wanted to fuck on? Yes. Do I believe all of these sexual stories of nature? Yes. But do I believe that this guy was feeling so pressured that Diddy's going to beat him up or do something. He's like, oh, my God, I don't want to fuck this girl, but I have to. No, no, no. I don't believe that at all. I believe he was a part of the lifestyle, and he just got mad because the nigga didn't get paid what he thought he was going to get paid. And I believe that him now recontextualizing this story as, oh, I'm a victim, right, is him Trying to get a little bit of revenge for Diddy not paying him the, the, the extra 21000 Listen, we've seen this many times. Then the nigga in X's murder case, nigga, they got 60000 or whatever they, they took from that bag, the backpack or 50000 what they took from the Louis bag that um X got. If that nigga did not get the 5000 he may have, he may have not snitched. But he, nigga was like, everybody got 15000 and I got five? All right, man. Your prosecutor, take me out my cell. I got a lot to tell y'all niggas. I'm snitching all these motherfuckers. So, again... You know, people will, you know, um, act a little different when especially, you know, and it might be a nominal over, uh, nominal amount of money. I think if he's paid the $50,000, even though low-key is more than that, so it's 50000 publishing and royalties, which he's not supposed to get no royalties. But still, let's say if he got what he wants, I don't think he ever says nothing about Diddy. So it, 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 we have to kind of also accept that this lawsuit is coming from him being disgruntled over some financial business stuff. Um, does it mean that he's lying about all the sexual shit? No, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm struggling to find how he was such a victim, right? It looked like he was having freak offs with them. You know, remember he was like, oh, yeah, I uh, I got, I blacked out. Like, bro, you're a whole grown ass man. You blacked out and woke up with you, Diddy, and two girls in bed? No, nigga. Y'all were tag team and having a two on two, nigga. Y'all niggas was over here doing the kid and play while fucking these girls. Stop playing like you were passed out. You just woke up like, wait, did I do that? No, nigga. You knew what was going on. You were part of the freak offs and a willing participant, man. He like the last thing who got fired from the freak off and now and now talking shit. Okay, another blah blah. Another occasion while standing in Mr. Combs' bedroom. He was forced to watch Mr. Combs display his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. He shared he was responsible for shooting in a nightclub in New York with Shine. Um, he shared that an artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, carried the gun in the club for him and passed him the gun. See, like, this thing is just also, sell he's just snitching on some other shit. He's like, he's, he's trying to get back at Diddy, 
right? Like this whole thing was a whole case. The Sean Combs, J Lo was with him. They went up in the club, shooting the courage, trying took the took the fall, whatever. He was terrified. Mr. Combs felt like he could not tell him no. He consistently made it clear that he had immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. He made it clear that his head of security, Mr. Muhammad, had the power to make people disappear and problems disappear. This is the, the head of security, supposedly. He instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if they're ever pulled over by the police in Miami or, or California. I actually believe this. Upon uh, information to believe that he spoke with LAPD after G was shot at CRS, the LAPD was in CRS and witnessed the blood in the restroom, and they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G uh, uh, occurred outside of a studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connection with law enforcement. Uh, they had no reason to believe that Mr. Combs, as he had seen firsthand through the shooting of G and the subsequent silence of LAPD and the media, that Mr. Combs indeed had the power to harm him. Okay, they're saying the LAPD spent hours in CRS after shooting of G, and yet there were no arrests. Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in a restroom pictured above, yet no arrests were made. Seemed like he's salty at that situation, too. N now he's talking about all the executives. He, re he recalls seeing Lucian Grange visiting Diddy's home in Miami, Florida. According to him, whenever Grange visited um, Diddy at his homes it would be in the evening and he and Diddy would disappear for hours in Combs bedroom so now he's saying that Diddy is fucking Lucian Grange too Jesus Christ or he's implying let me say defendant Grange sponsored and attended several love albums listing parties at Mr. Combs home in, in, in Los Angeles California these parties were sponsored by defendant Mr. L LR and UMG as evidence uh Above these parties has sex workers, underage girl present. Bro, I ain't gonna, bro, this lawsuit is kind of written to just kind of make it big. Diddy look bad at all points, and even you know some of the things that seem seemingly could be actually details. It feels like this thing is trying to just continue to paint like this image that I'm, I'm kind of struggling to believe. Even though I do believe the instances, the examples that he's naming, right? It's no secret that Combs had a specific bottle of alcohol designated for females and other bottles designated for his staff and his artists. The fact was detailed by former artist and bodyguard of Mr. Combs. As a sponsor of these events, Defendant Grange had a duty uh, and obligation to ensure sex workers and underage girls were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spiking the alcohol with date rape drugs. Oh, my God. See, this is not, you know, it's a little bullshit, bro. Look, on the YouTube channel, Art of Dialogue, like, come on, they're, they're like citing the YouTube channel right now. Like, bro, if you claim you were there, you've been to all these parties, nigga, tell us what you've seen. Like, nigga, t tell us something that you know f as a fact, right? Um, On YouTube, the Art of Dialogue, for former artist Mark Curry, he talks about that. We've heard about these things, but that those details came from, the guys who were around him then. I'm not saying Diddy don't do that this and third, but bro, don't use their story if you says you witness it too. Tell us your story, right? Oh, this writer? Who, who's this writer? Let's see. Has spoken with several former employees. Okay, all right. Who witnessed somebody instruct their staff to lay champagne, De Leon, and Ciroc bottles. Now they're saying that, def oh, so now they're saying that uh, Ethiopia, who is a, um, you know, like the, the person who runs Motown, was in on it. She's a woman. What the fuck? It, he said, I remember seeing her visiting Combs' home in Miami, Florida, L.A., and whenever they came to the house, it would be the evening, and he's, they're saying the same thing. They would disappear for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom. So now they're saying that, Diddy is fucking, Diddy's fucking Lucian Grange and Ethiopia. Ugh, see, they're, or not? They're, they're not saying it, but they're implying it. They sponsored. Okay, whatever. Jesus Christ. Oh my God! Look, defendant Christian Corb is the Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy.
Defended Christian Quorum is a Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs, Jeffrey Epstein. According to Mr. Jones, in the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Mr. Combs display and distribute guns from his bedroom closet in Miami, Florida, and L.A. to questionable individuals dressed in all black. According to Mr. Jones, the 13 months he lived with Mr. Combs, he witnessed defendant Quorum openly ordered assistance to keep Combs high off gummies and pills. Defendant Quorum required all employees from the butler to the chef to the housekeeper to walk around with a pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, XC, marijuana, gummies, um, Tusi. What else? Tusi. A pink drug that's a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. Oh, my God. That seems crazy. It was important to, to defendant Quorum to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready when he asked for it. They ordered sex workers, prostitutes from Mr. Combs, ordered and distributed ecstasy cocaine um, and mushrooms, and the celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht. Oh, my God. As a chief of staff, that person was instrumental in organizing and executed the RICO Enterprise. What the fuck? RICO Enterprise? Defendant Quorum had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the RICO enterprise. Stevie J, his job was to recruit sex workers and attend par, attend and participate in freak-offs. Okay? What the fuck? Hold on, let me see. What's 18? Oh, apparently... The, the, there's a video of this, and we'll provide it to the court. So they, they, they claim they have a video of this, which is Quorum openly ordering her assistance. So maybe he was sneak recording them the whole time. Uh, so defendant Quorum was openly telling her assistance to keep Mr. Combs high off gummies and pills. Okay. Fuck. Justin Combs solicit prostitutes, underage girls, and sex workers, and would engage in freak-offs. <laughs> Brendan Paul works as Mr. Combs' mule. He acquires, distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. Yo, this is this is crazy. Yo, this lawyer is now writing up a RICO case against them. What the fuck did this lawsuit turn into? Frankie Santella works alongside Brendan. While Brendan acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns, Frankie carries the money and pays for the guns and drugs. Mo Bayon hires sex worker and participates in freak offs. What the fuck? Mr. Combs funded and funded and uses affiliation with local gangs and gang leaders who would frequent his homes in LA and Miami to secure drugs and guns he obtained and distribute out of his homes in LA and Miami. Defense the defendants executed their RICO enterprise with the threat of violence, threatening to eat plaintiff's face, displaying and distributing guns in their in the plaintiff's presence, bragging about having the law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 New York City nightclub shooting with Shine. They executed their RICO enterprise. What the fuck? Defendants executed their uh, RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from music and entertainment industry parading around powerful inf music industry executives such as defendants Lucian Grange, Ethiopia, um, at his parties with sex workers, minors, illegal drugs such as S. Oh, my God. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of non-payment for work, fake promises of cash payments, and guaranteed access to future process, uh, projects and a $20 million home on Star Island. He's allowed to wreak havoc. While living in New York and traveling with Mr. Combs, he discovered that uh, Mr. Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his homes. He believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants Lucian Grange, Ethiopia, as well as other celebrities and athletes. Upon information and belief that these individuals are recorded without their knowledge, as is the case with a homosexual tape of Stevie J that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. Upon the, the information belief that due to the treasure trove of uh, evidence, 
he has in his uh, possession, Mr. Combs believes that he's above the law and untouchable. Upon information belief, he employs Joe Cruz as his IT director. The writer, uh, this writer has spoken um, to several employees of Mr. Combs who, confis who confirm that Joe Cruz is the gatekeeper of all Mr. Combs. He says Mr. Combs. See, there's typos here. Upon information belief, Joe Cruz intentionally hides these cameras from social media and the internet due to all the incriminating acts he was required to record for Combs. What in the fuck is this? This nigga filed a fucking lawsuit and said that he's running a Rico. A freak off. Like, literally a freak off Rico. Like, bro, this nigga is a menace. The members of the Rico Enterprise all share a common purpose to enrich themselves financially and sexually at the expense of producers, musicians, writers, creators, artists by maximizing the defendants' revenues through fraudulent means. Damn, they basically saying Diddy's a scammer. God damn. Oh my God. All right. They're pretty much repeating a lot, a lot of the stuff, but they're talking about racketeering now. So they're saying that based on all the acts they described, they're they're suing, they're suing Diddy and all those companies for operating as a uh, as part of a RICO enterprise that they believe goal is to get Diddy richer, starve other people of resources, and also by any means necessary satisfies Diddy's insatiable appetite for sex or sexual experiences, okay? Wow, this is some crazy shit. Said Diddy committed mail fraud. What? They say Diddy could yo, they're throwing the book at Diddy. Mail fraud, wire fraud, Rico. What the hell? Sexual assault. Okay. I, I, this is where they would they would definitely say Mr. Combs fucked him, which I don't which I don't think the guy makes that claim. Mr. Jones incorporates references from all the preceding paragraphs and realleges them as it as if set forth herein. As described above, Mr. Combs frightened and placed plaintiff in apprehension of harm when he physically and sexually assaulted him from um, October 22nd or 22 to October 23, which is the year. Uh, Mr. Combs, uh, in all Mr. Combs' homes, he forcibly touched, okay, so they're saying the touching and sexual assault, touched and attempted or threatened to touch him in an intimate area or touch the plaintiff with his own body part. He violently um, gripped and palmed. His anus, like, holy shit. And his crotch without consent. He forced him to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom um, and watch Mr. Combs as he showered. Uh, Mr. Combs forced him to work in the studio while he stripped naked to get a body massage. Forced him to work while Mr. Combs walked around naked. As a result of uh, Mr. Combs' conduct, plaintiff has suffered from... Um, Great physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he's entitled to an award of monetary damages and all other relief. The conduct of Mr. Combs was above was willful, wanted, and malicious. Oh, my God. This is... I don't know. This, this lawsuit is like bullshit, though. But, you know, um, I, I think this nigga was having a good old time. And, you know, what happens in this music industry, some, sometimes people don't like pain. Like, for example... Yo, you could experience this lifestyle with me because I'm going to live this lifestyle anyway. But when it comes time to pay somebody, it's like you're like, bro, look, look, look what I I was paying. I was paying for this for you. I brought you here. I brought you on this trip. And, um, you know, it, it's not necessarily about paying you. It's about, bro, look at the life you lived. And I think this dude is just salty that after a year he gained like thirty thousand dollars, and he probably was tight. Like, what the fuck? Like, damn, yeah, I, I had fun fucking them bitches and doing all this type of shit. But what the fuck? This thing it don't look like no goddamn victim to me, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Lorena, do you think this is a victim? Like, 
I I believe that all these parties and all these sexual escapades happen. I just don't think that this nigga's a victim. His only thing is saying that, oh, I couldn't leave because, because Diddy is a fearful man. You see, I'm more likely to believe that if you're in a relationship with him. You're a grown-ass man who is coming and going, who's flying all over the place, who is going out to clubs to solicit women that Diddy's asking you. And it's not that Diddy's like, like you're sleeping with some of these women too. It, it, it just kind of seems like this is a disgruntled dude over some money. And he's like, oh, where are you on to play? I'm going to turn all my experience with you into allegations. As detail, let me see. Now he suffers from insomnia, PTSD, severe anxiety, and depression. No, that nigga suffers from brokenness. That's what's going on. He's broke, and he's trying to get some bread. Additionally, the fear and silence from the remaining witnesses aided in the reinforcement of Combs' statement that he's untouchable. Fourth cause of action, sexual assault, which is against Jane Doe. Because she... She forcibly touched him. Remember, it says Jane Doe forcibly touched and attempted to uh, or threatened to touch the plaintiff intimate areas or touch them with her own body, intimate body parts. She used her mouth to perform an oral sex on a plaintiff while he was urinating in the restroom. Plaintiff fought her off. What the fuck? Mr. Combs sat outside laughing. He followed Mr. Jones outside of the restroom and began undressing in front of Mr. Combs and his associates straddled Mr. Jones, attempted to have forced intercourse with him. As a result, uh, he offered, he suffered, uh, blah, blah. okay, this is some crazy shit. All right. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all the, Okay. All right, so, all right, so now there's re-mentioning everything. The Cuba Gun Jr. situation, now they're saying the sex trafficking, they're, they're accusing him of sex trafficking too, Jesus Christ. Now they're saying they're suing Diddy for, oh, this went on, down at your house, so you're liable. They're saying, yes, aiding, aiding, abetting, and inducing a sex trafficking venture in violation of trafficking victims. What? Tenth cause? It says nine. I don't know what that means. Eleventh cause? Nine. I don't know what that means. Or head? Or is this head? Or I don't know what the fuck that is. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's about the end of the lawsuit. Like usually, this is just a bunch of like you know um. Yeah, like right now they're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell and shit. Yeah, they're basically giving some precedents that, hey, a lot of these things that he's accused of, courts or law enforcement have seen as crimes. Um, and because those things are seen as crimes, you know, I have a case in civil court and it should be taken serious. I'm going to be honest with you. I just personally don't think this guy's a victim, bro. Do they ask for a certain amount of money? Mm, nah, they don't. Prayer for relief. Yeah. A, a award of punitive damage in an amount to be determined at trial. Okay, so they don't ask for a certain amount. They probably have asked for a settlement, which I would imagine that this is now coming out now because it's coming out now in, um, because of um, maybe a settlement got turned down, right? Because usually... A lawyer is going to come to you and be like, yo, if you just give us 50 grand, we're just going to, there'll be no law, so we'll sign an NDA. Pretty sure Diddy said no. They'll be like, all right, bet. So we're going to put this out, go to the press. So I'm guessing this is going to either have to go to court or we're going to figure out what happens. Defendants are demanded to provide a copy of, all right, yeah, bullshit. Okay. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. 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 That's a great question. Millennium mindset. I think you asked a great question. Is this a victim or volunteer? 
I, I think we're, we're becoming less and less shocked with the idea that Diddy has these freak off encounters and these wild parties that probably culminate in sex workers and other people having sex. Now, the next question becomes how much of this is illegal activity, for example, and we don't give a fuck about if there's cocaine or some drugs. We care about sexual assault, right? Now, again, you know, I think maybe if this was like, you know, um, I'm sorry to also say because he's a guy, it also hurts his case a little bit too because, you know, what really threat of fear if you keep coming back to that nigga? You keep going to his houses and flying around with him. Like, what do you think he was going to kill you? Like, just stop going. Go ghost on that nigga. Like, peace out. It's more understandable if you're in a relationship with him or something. But this dude looked like he was enjoying the lifestyle, too, if you ask me. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. How we doing? All right, we at 239. We doing all right? Doing all right? Bet, 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 bet. Okay, cool. Ja Rule been the